Good evening and welcome back to World of Tanks, Jager 262, and today I wanted to bring you a special review of a vehicle that, just like all the other ones, we thought we wouldn't see before, then it got resold a bunch of times, then they pulled it again so we wouldn't see it again, and then it's up for sale all over again. And that is because this very special vehicle, the Zoo 85i, was at one point so overpowered it broke the game in terms of tier 5 tank destroyers and just a tier 5 vehicle that could pretty much obliterate any opponent it came up against at any tier. It was crazy and it was initially removed just like the Panzer 2J the, or um, the Panzer B2, a heavy tank. There's a lot of vehicles like this but they always seem to come back and so I thought I'd pick one up I'm obviously not great at tank destroyers as you saw from my Sirocco gameplay I am pretty poor with them but I decided I was going to do a review on this vehicle and kind of test it out and see what it's like for you guys and just show you a little bit about how this vehicle operates now why it's not as dangerous as Wargaming is selling it as which they keep saying, you know, highest DPM, greatest turret has verse, highest, you know, damage per shot, all this crazy stuff. Uh, how in the new game, with all the new vehicles and everything rebalanced, it's not as big a threat as it used to be. But before I do that, I just want to take a quick second to tell you guys about a website called XP Gains, and I will leave a link to the website in the description below. It is a game service website where gamers such as myself or even you could if you wanted to sell services such as game analysis coaching they will unlock event tasks they sell time to play XP games and do all kinds of different things for players who might not have enough time or just want to learn from a few experts how to play their game better I currently do not have any services listed on their site but I'm thinking about getting into some game analysis for World of Tanks. I'm not sure if I'll do it or not yet, but if you guys do want some extra tips on how to play World of Tanks better or any game at all, I highly encourage you to go over to XP Gains. You use my promo code, it's just Jaeger, just like you see it on the videos, and you'll get 10% off of any service that you do purchase. And it helps me keep making videos and helps me continue my YouTube channel when you do that. So that plug out of the way let's get straight into comparisons because I want to get down to one very big detail about the Zoo 85i that always comes up and that is it has the highest EPM of any tier 5 vehicle now if you go to compare and this is because when Chinese tank destroyers first came out they were crazy overpowered you'll notice that the average damage per minute is identical to the 60 GFT and now while I'm not comparing it to all tier 5 vehicles I'm not even comparing it to all tier 5 tank destroyers these are the five tank destroyers that I felt best suited the Zoo 85 eyes gameplay obviously the Zoo 85 standard that was going to be in Stug 3 and that's because this is a Panzer 3 chassis with the gun of the Zoo 85 so it's both of these combined uh, the AT2 just because it's a quick firing gun the 60 G because I knew that was a powerful one and this one because it has the highest damage per shot of any vehicle in the game and of course if you go back on Wargaming's website they'll say that this is second only to this vehicle with the impressive 320 but it's not true in fact the Zoo 85i or I should say the 60 GFT which is the standard tier 5 Chinese tank destroyer is almost identical in its stats to the Zoo 85i and the reason for that I can only imagine is that when they developed the Chinese tank destroyer, they just used the Zoo 85's stats and just pretty much remodeled the Zoo 85i and just put it into the game as that tank destroyer. Now, I'm not saying that's exactly what they did, I'm not saying that's true, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I bought it just to bring you this video, but they sell it as like this really time crunch, it's really unique vehicle, and it is really unique, but it's not as powerful as it used to be because of new vehicles in the game that it will not only be facing against that makes it less powerful in terms of penetration and damage but also that ever since the addition of Chinese tank destroyers it is no longer the best of the best now if you're like me you don't really care I love novelty vehicles I'm a collector but if you look through all these stats 
uh, average penetration is better on the 60 rate of fire obviously e, you know it goes to the AT2 worse than the Stug 3 worse than the Zoo 85 identical again to the 60 GFT reload time 4.31 seconds again identical to that Chinese tank destroyer it's gun traverse speed and they don't do hull traverse speed for whatever reason they've taken nope there it is okay they took turret traverse speed out and replaced it with gun traverse speed I don't know if it's the same I know I mentioned that in another video I think it's a little bit different but it's pretty much the same as all these vehicles except for the IKV-103 and the AT-2 they're all identical same one gun depression 25 up negative 5 down worse than the 8 degrees of gun depression that the 60 GFT gets in fact worse than all of them even the AT2 gets better gun depression than this vehicle gun traverse limits 10 degrees yeah it's not really that important that's just the arc that the gun can move in aim time 2.21 same as the 60 GF or the Zoo 85 so this is going to be a very effective tank destroyer if you want it to train a Zoo 85 crew or if you want it to train a Soviet crew it's actually going to be really good at that job so if that's a buying point for you I highly encourage you getting it it plays exactly like it but don't expect for players who just want like this crazy high damaging vehicle that's going to commit lethal strikes don't count on hitting all your targets with you know an aim time of 2.2 now that's not terrible I make it sound like it's terrible but it's not but the dispersion of 0 0.4 is pretty bad especially when it's a second only to the 60G with oh wait no I'm sorry I forgot I keep forgetting the IKV over here 0 0.52 that's possibly the worst dispersion at 100 meters I've seen in a <laughs> I've seen yeah, this is bad DPM is ridiculously high at 2200 that is really high for tier 5 and I want to make it very clear that even though it is exactly the same as the 60G that it is still significantly high it's just that if you don't want to purchase this vehicle if you feel like you're missing out on a vehicle that can do more than most tank destroyers at this tier don't worry just switch gears a little bit leave the Soviet line pick up the 60 GFT from the Chinese line you'll get the same exact experience the only thing that you won't get is of course the premium credits that it earns and the premium experience for training crews but if you're okay with losing that I would wait not buy it and just play the 60 GF if you're like me you don't play Chinese tank destroyers you do play Soviet ones I would still I would stick with the Zoo 85 i because that DPM is really big I mean that's just great hit points 380 um, I mean that's pretty good compared to the others here uh, though the AT2 obviously gets more, 60G gets more, but not by much, only by 20. Hull armor 603050. The only one that's going to beat this vehicle, and that's this is really why you want to buy this vehicle is the armor, is the AT2. That's it. All the tank destroyers cannot compete with this thing's armor. It's got great frontal armor, and the angles on it, which I'll show you when I get back into the actual garage, is what really is the selling point for me for this vehicle, is armor statistics. Mobility, it's it's a Soviet tank destroyer on a German chassis, so it's going to move like a German vehicle. Engine power 300, specific weight ratio 13.4, not not great. Uh, top speed 50, 14. You probably won't hit 50 very often though. And here's traverse speed. Here's the hull traverse speed, which is the only statistic that War Gaming was really talking about. They're like, it's the fastest. It really is at 50 degrees a second I don't think any vehicle at tier 5 can turn that fast I'm obviously not going to go through all of them so if you do know of one that can please let me know in the comment section below but that is ridiculously fast that was not a huge selling point for me not more than the armor and the DPM but it is at least honest that nothing matches it that I know of in the game 50 degrees a second is ridiculous you can turn that that's faster than some heavy tanks turrets so you're gonna be able to turn if you just leave this thing you don't lock the gun at all and just let it follow your cursor you'll be able to turn stationary of course as if you do have a turret and react to threats very rapidly so very hard vehicle if you're playing against it to flank for that reason so remember that if you see these in battle and you're gonna see a lot of them in battle because they just started selling again just a small spike 
I'll probably never see him again. But when you are playing against them, remember, incredibly hard to flank these vehicles. Concealment is 358. Not great. Definitely not terrible. Way better than the 60 GFT, which has a horrible 212. And that overall rating comes from when it gets 20. 41% concealment when stationary compared to only 12 in the Chinese vehicle. Uh, it's only worse the amazing 24% of the IKB 103, and then of course the Stug and the Zoo 85. Well, I shouldn't say of course, the Stug I knew was going to be better. I didn't know the Zoo 85 had 22%. That's pretty great. And then spotting 430, you get 330 view range and 548 signal range. Best signal range in the game, so you'll be able to one spot for your team faster and basically relay battle information faster but the view range is pretty bad when you compare it to oh geez what did I do there it is to the 60 GFT and when I say pretty bad it's only 10 10 meters off but the reason I say that is that both of these vehicles here which have 340 and of course the terrible 310 here it for tier 5 that's not that bad that's pretty good 340 or 330, but you won't be able to unlock better modules, I guess, for this because it is premium. However, I would counter that with coded optics. With coded optics, that's going to shoot up. I'm going to put coded optics on mine. I would recommend if you have this to just put coded optics. You don't necessarily need it because it's so fast and it's consumed so good that you can just wait for vehicles to wander into your path. And with 330 meters and at 548 signal range, you're going to see those vehicles a lot quicker than some of your teammates so it's really not a statistic you need to worry about but if you want the extra edge in the battle just go for coded optics and that pretty much ends the comparison so while it does have some very impressive factors but the two for me are its armor and its traverse speed it plays a lot like the Chinese tier 5 so if you missed out on this one or if you don't want to buy it don't worry there is another tank destroyer in the game that kind of feels similar However, because of its traverse speed and because of the angles, these are the angles I'm talking about. This, easy to penetrate for any vehicle. Any tier 6 can be able to shoot down straight into this and into this. But when you're seeing tier 5s and tier 4s and you're keeping your gun down like this, yes, they'll shoot into your lower plate, but they won't be able to pen this. And anything up in this region is just going to bounce right off. The only real thing you have to worry about here is the commander's capola. That will get hit a lot. And then, of course, once you get to the side and the back, you're pretty much dead. However, in this vehicle, very hard to do with that 50 degrees of traverse. So it is, for its tier, a highly armored, very fast vehicle. And so unlike the Chinese tank, which has to tank destroy, which has to be a sniper vehicle, you can actually play fairly aggressively mid-range in the Zoo 85i. Obviously, you can't go close range with this thing. You can't go close range with any tank destroyer. But it is going to be a good mid-range aggressive killer. And so I think it's personally very interesting. It was a real project that the Soviets used in the same way that the Germans took Beaut Panzers or Booty Panzers of uh, the T-34. The Russians did the same thing with the Panzer III's. However, they didn't have any ammunition for the guns. And instead of salvaging it from the battlefield, they decided to come up with this and mount the indigenous Russian 85 to it, making it a very deadly ad hoc tank destroyer coming into the war just before the Zoo 85 or when the Zoo 85 was seeing limited operation numbers. This was a good interim vehicle. And so it's interesting for the historical side. It's interesting to me just as a collector. And I think it'll be a really fun tank to try to play even if it's no longer the best of the best. It's still only compared to one other tank destroyer in the game at tier 5. And that's pretty good for me. So that ends my review. And after this, just like with the King Tiger captured, I will post another video with me playing games on this vehicle and per request it will not be my best games. I'll show you some really good games and I'll show you some really bad games. If you want to get notified for when that video goes up, please subscribe to the channel. Please give a thumbs up to this video if you enjoyed it. It really goes a long way to helping me create these videos. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And before I go, remember XP Gains, that service website for making yourself better in a game, getting coached or any kind of service you could imagine, I will leave a link in the description below. Use my code to get 10% discount, and that'll be it. Thank you so much.